All right, guys, we got a special episode today. We're with Josh from Killer Doc. What's up, guys? We are down here in southern Alabama doing some redfish? Redfish, speckled trout, maybe a few flounder. Sweet. So my first experience, I'll be learning all today. I can't wait to show you guys uh, what we do, but also the Killer Docs facilities and all that great stuff. So. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. We're actually gonna do the tour of the Killer Doc in the next episode, but let me tell you, it was fantastic. But today is nothing but spectacular. Josh brings me on a trip that we'll never forget. I learned so much and we caught some massive fish. So stick with me, here we go. Great day to have fish going in the boat. Oh. And you're saying that the popping of the bobber does what? The theory is it imitates, that noise imitates the sound of other fish feeding, which gets the curiosity of surrounding fish up and they come to investigate and then they eat your bait. Oh! You got him? Yeah, I got him. Got him? Yeah, I'm going to say he's smaller. Right yeah. That is pretty. So why do you tag them? The so the uh, Dolphin Island Sea Lab and the University of South Alabama and CCA have come together to put this tagging program together so they when we put a tag out, we give the information of where we caught it, uh, the tag number, of course, how long the fish was. Sometimes we'll take a weight as well. And then when an angler recaptures it, he'll gather the same data and give it back to us so we can see a little bit about travel patterns, growth rates, tag retention, uh, mortality, that sort of thing. Uh, it's just a kind of a good way to keep tabs on the fishery and make sure we're taking care of it as best we can. So just put a little dark tag in with a needle. Pull it out. Very cool. Yeah, set them free. Sweet. Yeah. Give us a little bit of a background on Killer Doc and the company itself. Yep, so Killer Doc is a awesome company. It's a family owned business. The Williamson started it roughly about five years ago, really just out of necessity. Um, the dad, Brian, decided he was going to replace his wooden, rotten fish cleaning station and had a background in metals and decided to build his own and in no time had a budding, growing, uh, very successful business. Uh, they make the best fish cleaning stations known to mankind. If you haven't seen them, check them out at KillerDoc.com. Uh, we got some other cool products we're rolling out too. So uh, go give us a look and maybe we can help you out. Later in the episode. I'm really kind of surprised there's not more. Oh, there you go. Oh, well, that's drum. a big old drum. <laughs> it's a small one by comparison. Really? Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Big old drum. There's another one right there. Oh, jellyfish, okay. That's a fish we're familiar with. If you ever want to feel like you're catching a three pounder. Oh, he's probably, and he's right on the borderline of too big to clean, but give it a whirl. So Josh is gonna tie on a whole new leader. He's gonna give us an ex a uh, tutorial on how to do it. Yep. What, now this knot here you're gonna do right here. Yeah, so this is just a double uni. I'm going, uh, going fluorocarbon to braid. In this case, they're both 20 pounds. Double uni is very simple. Just make a loop with your leader material around the main line. Normally I only am gonna do about 
maybe three or four twists with the fluorocarbon. And then just kind of pull it snug. Do the exact same thing, repeat that on the other side. But normally when I'm looping the braid, I'm gonna loop it a few more times just to keep it from slipping and make sure that it's gonna cinch down tight. There's three, four, I'm gonna go five times, pull that snug, and you'll see the two knots, pull them tight so they slide together, pull that tight, snip your tag ends, and you're good to go. Sweet. And I like to run longer leaders, uh, mainly just so that as I'm changing baits throughout the day, that's one or two less times throughout the day that I have to tie on new leaders. Wow. Need one to pour it on. Half drawn. That was a real pretty fish. That guy came. Yeah, yeah I got him. Watch his gill plate. Anything else? Oh, that's it. Yeah, Look at mama and them. There you go. That's a pretty one. That's going to be close. God, that's a pretty fish. Nope. Whatever it is, that's pretty good. It means business. Wow, took off. Very cool. I'm fighting like a shack. There's a lot of small ones in here. There's a big one out there. Here, redfish. What we've been looking for. <laughs> He's not happy. Look at that. I just want to see color now. I know, right? I just want to know what it is. Oh, oh wow. It is a redfish? Yeah, I'll grab that net. Holy mackerel, that thing was huge. What are they doing over here? They're supposed to be over there. Wow. Good night, dude. <laughs> he is fighting. This is awesome. That is a big fish. That's probably around the upper slot. Nailed it. Well done, sir. Wow, that is that? awesome, dude. <laughs> you hear him drumming? Congrats, that's sweet. Yeah, we gotta get you tight on one. Man, that's awesome, dude. Heard it's nothing but it's fantastic is what I heard. Oh they are. Get a, get a shot of that bait in there. Wow. Alright guys, we're gonna take a little bit boat trip here. We're gonna go to the cleaning station, get these fish cleaned, and uh, we're gonna walk you through that whole process as well. As as well as show you a killer dock. Of course we are. So uh, check out here, we're just motoring through a little channel i guess all right guys we made it to the killer dock this is a five and a half footer right here this is great for your 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 weekend angler can get it done no doubt about it on any dock um there's our catch that's what we're gonna clean that's what we're going home with today beautiful fish man i have, I have to be honest though josh caught them all so you know but he but he is the guide on the foul river foul, foul river area yeah. yeah it's that's gonna happen so just being honest about it but that's that was an awesome catch right there, guys. That, that saved the day. 
but now we get to enjoy them on a killer dock and you guys gotta check them out at killerdock.com. All right, Josh is gonna go ahead and start on the uh, black drum. Already did the white trout there. Now he's told me that these are extremely small. He typically would not be cleaning those, but because we wanted to make sure we had something to clean today, we went ahead with it. But this guy's a good size and certainly the redfish is upper limits there. So always just a regular fillet knife, not a uh, reciprocating. Yeah, so I've done the uh electric fillet knife plenty of times and traveling around you know chartering here there and everywhere uh, now they've got the nice battery operated ones but i was dragging around a cord and got tired of trying to find a place to plug it in yep, so just yep. got used to the yep. fixed blade now this black drum good eating yes uh, so when they get larger no but when they're this size or younger the rule of thumb typically is if they still maintain their stripes they're going to be good to eat as they get larger you know they're a bottom dwelling fish you can get worms in the meat uh, which a lot of times you can just cut them out. But for the most part, these smaller ones should not have any and they're very, very good table fare. Okay, now we do catch our fair share of drum in crappie fishing, um, but they don't look, they're not a black drum, I guess. And maybe black drum and the drum that we catch are different. Probably so. So you're just cutting it off the ribs. Yep, trying to leave the ribs in there as best I can and get as much meat off of them as possible. They've got really tough skin, so Got to make sure you got a sharp knife to get through that leathery skin and those big scales. So you can see that filet there is worm free, very pretty meat. Uh, it's going to be really good, however you decide to prepare it. There you go. Finished product right there, guys. That's gonna end it. Fantastic day here to put Josh and Killer Doc. Just can't can't say I appreciate you enough, Josh, for doing that. But we also now have the owner of Killer Doc, hey, Jay. Hey. He's in the house. And uh Josh and Jay are gonna take us for a tour around the facility in the next episode. So appreciate you guys for doing all this for me. And yeah, look forward to seeing you on the next show. Thanks, appreciate Josh. You, Seriously. That was yeah, awesome. Sir, we'll do it again. <laughs>